Hi, this is Kuban. Today I'm going to present you our node-based compositing system running on the GPU, which enables real-time visual effects uh, workflows for media professionals. Um, you know, the Virtual Studio started in 90s, uh, and the conventional approach in those days was using an external chroma keyer as a compositor to composite green screen video uh, with the uh, background uh, coming from the renderer. The renderers provided fill and key signals to the chroma keyer, and um, then the green screen composite is uh, fed into uh, another device, possibly a vision mixer. Uh, then if you had a foreground element, then you have to send another fill and key signal, possibly from another uh, rendering computer uh, to that vision mixer. So uh, you had to create kind of complex setup, lots of uh, specialized devices, and uh, it was really hard to create that uh, virtual studio, but yeah, lots of people were doing that. And Media professionals in uh, 90s uh, used to believe that computers didn't have uh, the required bandwidth and uh, computing power to cope with uh, the necessary algorithms for green screen keying, compositing, and uh, those effects. But in 2016 at NAB, we introduced our uh, software reality engine to the media and entertainment industry. So everybody was looking to the results and they were asking, how is that running? Uh, what hard hardware do you have? Where is it? We were just showing them a basic single computer which had just one CPU with the top of the line GPU and uh, an AJA video IO board. So that was it, just a simple camera. Uh, we were just receiving the video signal um, from the camera along with the tracking data. Then we were compositing everything using the GPU on a single computer and outputting the final composite. So the setup was a lot more easier, simpler, and the results were really effective. Traditionally, video application developers rely on video boards for the pixel format, color space, and gamma conversions. These conversions require a lot of FPGA power on the video IO board, and the uh, increasing size consumes more PCIe bandwidth. And video application developers are also bound to the video IO manufacturers, video IO board manufacturers, SDKs, for the video IO features of their applications. For example, uh, if they need to support a color space, then the video board uh, manufacturers, SDKs, has to provide it, or th the same goes for a pixel format and uh, gamma as well. Usually that's the traditional way video application developers utilize video IO SDKs. When developing our software solution, we thought that we should utilize GPU shaders for color space conversions, pixel format, and gamma conversions. So we were keeping the data size uh, moved from the video IO board to the GPU uh, minimal in its original um, say, in its original size, and we were fully in control of uh, applying the pixel format conversion filters and color spaces. Uh, so that was our approach. We were much more in control. And then uh, we also implemented um, in our node graph, for example, the keyer uh, is implemented as a node, and instead of connecting um, the keyer with cables to a uh, scaler, for example, then apply a sharpening filter, we were just uh, connecting those nodes in the GPU memory instead of real physical cables and real physical devices. So instead of the complex setup of uh, conventional broadcast hardware, 
we were providing a complete virtual studio solution using one PC. So when doing this composite uh, on the GPU, everything starts with uh, input. The input is coming like in 8 bits or 10 bits. You s choose the pixel format and bit depth you would like to capture. You select the color space you are inputting and which gamma curve has to be applied uh, to the incoming video signal. Then everything is converted to C linear and 16-bit uh, uh, half float RGBA textures. So any image processing effect here like keying, scaling, sharpening is applied to C linear images. So this is resulting in a mathematically correct composite. The rendering from Unreal and all those passes are also coming in as HDR 16-bit uh, half float RGBA textures in seen in here again. And then we are compositing it with the video and the rendering passes here. Then afterwards, we are outputting to the video output card choosing our video signal format, pixel formats, and we do all those conversions and um, then we transfer to the video output card. Uh, but all, all that processing is done with our shaders like uh, color space conversion and pixel formats. Traditionally, visual effects software developed in late 80s were layer based. In the 90s, a few node-based compositing software started to appear, such as Digital Fusion and Soft Image ID. But at the beginning of this millennium, node-based compositors, such as Foundry's Nuke, became a major part of the high-end visual effects pipeline. Um, because a node-based compositing graph allows a maintainable and high-performance pipeline, you can, uh, you can really understand what's going on and you can use the same input in multiple spaces. Uh, so if you calculate something in one pin, you can use it in more than one place. Uh, this is not that easy in uh, layer-based approaches. And um, since you have redundant copies of some operations, it's not easy to maintain and edit and change later. So we have uh, taken the same approach that was um, widely used in the visual effects industry for uh, movies and high-end commercials and brought the same approach uh, and techniques to real-time live production by implementing a real-time node-based compositor on the GPU. When developing our node-based compositor, we also decided to implement a real-time image-based keyer running on the GPU. So in the real world, uh, if you look to our cyclorama, for example, uh, just check the image. Uh, can we see the engine output uh, as full screen, please? Yes. Please look to the image on the right. Uh, the green screen is not perfectly even, but still the composite looks quite OK. Uh, you can see there are some dark areas in the coals and on the wall. Uh, the floor and the walls brightness are different uh, on the cyclorama. It's not really perfect. Um, so, but uh, even with that, image-based king uh, provides a good result. Uh, so, uh, how is that achieved? I'm going to show you how it is. Can you move the camera? As you can see, at every frame, we have a synthetic version of the clean plate that is tracked along with the camera. And our, uh, if you look to our node graph uh, on the king node, uh, can we please show the node graph? Yes, in the node graph, we can see that the input and clean plate is coming from the cyclorama rendering after the lens distortion is being applied. So the keyer works uh, with the clean plate differencing method on every pixel. So this is basically uh, what you need for image-based king. 
so let's come to the uh, real problem again. Let's look uh, to our engine output. Uh, can we see the engine output? Yes. Um, say that even if you can light your cyclorama evenly, uh, do you really want that? Because some of the areas need to be darker, the other areas need to be brighter if you have a bigger uh, cyclorama. The reason is you want to match to the, uh, say, virtual set, because your virtual set is not even lit. Some, some areas are brighter, some areas are darker, maybe uh, the talent walks under a, a spotlight or something. But People usually think that we should even light our cyclorama. It should be all single green color. Because, yes, that's how you should chroma key. But is it going to really match to your visual graf virtual graphics? Or are you making a sacrifice for traditional chroma keying method? So the solution to this problem is using a clean plate and with that clean plate, you look to the difference on every pixel and you apply your col color difference uh, king algorithm. So maybe we should check the results uh, with this. Uh, we should first focus to the feet. Please look to the shadows on the floor and how it looks uh, real w after the compositing because uh, all the details are kept uh, we don't clamp anything in the key uh, also uh, yes uh, how real it looks with the shadows we should also maybe check the transparent water bottle uh, how it looks yeah uh, as you can see all the details on the water bottle, transparencies, highlights, every detail is kept along with the hair details in the key. Whereas color-based keyers base their matte extraction on a baseline color selected by the user, image-based keying compares pixel values. I quoted this from Lee Lanier from his book Professional Digital Compositing. If you think about comparing pixel values, imagine you implement a shader uh, for keying uh, you input two textures uh, to your shader. Uh, one is the incoming video, uh, the other is your clean plate. Whatever algorithm you build, uh, those are your inputs. Uh, and this is how image-based keying should be implemented. If we compare color-based key versus image-based keying, uh, no matter which keying algorithm is being used, it is based on a baseline color value, which is picked by the user. And if the cyclorama is not perfectly uniform, then to compensate for the non-uniformity, you have to add some tolerance uh, values, uh, but this means clamping the matte signal. This will result in jaggy edges, and it will mean loss of detail, for example, uh, the shadows on the floor, you might not be able to keep all of them. The transparency details, the hair, it might not be possible to keep all those details. But with the image-based key, obviously, you don't have to add any tolerance. You are comparing uh, pixel by pixel uh, to the clean plate. So you don't uh, add those tolerances, so your keying algorithm is possibly be keeping most of the details without any problems. Clean plates can be captured for static cameras to make an image-based key, but how to create it every frame for a moving camera? Basically, uh, you need to know your cyclorama mesh. As you can see uh, in our engine output right now, the cyclorama mesh that we have defined uh, is overlaid as wireframe on top of our video. And uh, we can use this mesh to project our clean plates and uh, render um, 
our clean plate with the tracking information. So right now we are rendering a uh, uh, clean plate uh, with our uh, cyclorama renderer. Yeah, uh, but you have to render it every frame along with your um, tracking data. If you look to the node graph, we just render it from the cyclorama. Uh, we render the clean plate, render the garbage mask, then apply lens distortion, and then uh, connect it to the cure as the mask and the clean plate. But in order to do that, you need precise lens calibration data. Uh, for example, your field of view, K1, K2, lens distortion values, etc. Without the lens calibration, it won't work. Uh, so, after we define our cyclorama uh, in 3D space and we have the tracking data, we basically uh, project the clean plate, uh, which we see here, uh, and you can have multiple clean plates to the cyclorama mesh. And this is how we render at every frame the clean plate. Well, after thinking about image-based king, uh, can it be really applied in real life production? That question really comes. Uh, can we really use this in live production? Uh, the question is obviously yes, but here is how the workflow works. Uh, you first capture the clean plates to map the whole cyclorama, but this has to happen after you uh, stabilize all the camera settings and your lighting in your cyclorama. Then after you capture this and project back to the cyclorama mesh, uh, you have to render it uh, in your application along with the lens uh, data and tracking information, render the synthetic clean plate at every frame. Then the image-based gear should work with that input uh, and create an image-based key. But after preparing all those stuff, um, what is the pros of the image-based key approach? Maybe we should have a look at it. Uh, designed, the image-based gear is designed to work with non-uniformly lit cycloramas, so it it doesn't it doesn't really need to be uniform. So uh, we don't need to add any tolerance to the key since it is designed to work like that. This is allowing us to create a dramatic lighting setup to match our 3D scene when required. Not really all the 3D scenes are homogeneous. It's, it's like it can be dramatic, it can be dark somewhere, brighter in some other area. And since we have a very accurate clean plate for every pixel, uh, we can now apply the spill subtraction for the edges very accurately. So this really is very important for the accuracy of the key. But if you think about the cons, I can only tell you there's one con. After you stabilize all your camera setups and your lighting, you need to empty the green screen. So the talent has to walk out and you need to capture the clean plates uh, to project back onto the cyclorama mesh. Well, after uh, you know about uh, the image-based skiing technology, um, maybe you should also know how expensive it is to compute. Uh, our implementation is working with uh, GPU uh, fragment shaders and uh, for the modern GPUs, the Ultra HD image is not uh, really taking much time. The computing power utilization is very low. It can be also even used as a gaming gear, uh, which can uh, work on low-end GPUs as well. After talking the details of our compositor and keying algorithm, maybe we should check um, how the compositing works inside a virtual studio application. Uh, let's have a look to the final composite. 
uh, as you can see, the color is not really matching. We I just moved uh, the track set location into another position, and it doesn't really look right. So let's go to the keyer where we can out uh, maybe adjust the color correction values. I just adjust the gamma and I lower the exposure values. So in order to match with the spell, I'm maybe adding more blue. Yeah, so in our node graph, we can also apply and color match uh, our talent into the location as well. Uh, can we pull out with the camera and check uh, how we are doing also layer ordering? So if the talent is behind a 3D object, we need the uh, foreground elements video masks. Maybe we should check it with the channel weaver. Yes, and okay. So this is the mat that we are rendering. Uh, so the alpha channel is actually showing the mask. Can we see our program view uh, in full screen, please? Yeah, so um, we should also see the uh, channel one and then, so this is how we are masking the virtual set in front of the uh, talent video. There is also one more detail. Let's look to the bloom pass. This is the lens flare on the uh, left. If you look to this image, this, this pass needs to get added on top of our talent to to create a bloom pass on top of the video. These are um, really enhancing the realism when mixing the uh, real image with the 3D video. You need the foreground elements mask and you need um, a bloom pass on top of it to achieve this kind of realism in the composite. Okay, that was it. Thank you very much for watching our presentation.